Well, Erica Doyle is the founder of Drink Dry Store, the first non-alcoholic drinks marketplace in the Middle East. Erica, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. So, what is driving the increased consumption of these zero-alcohol beers in the Middle East, do you think? Hi. Um, so, look, I think the, the most simplistic answer is uh, availability. If you look back, and uh, malt beverages have been available in the market for a very long time, but good quality alcohol-free drinks haven't been available in the market. And with companies like Drink Dry coming into, into play, we started importing really good quality alcohol-free beers, um, and the consumers are getting exciting. And it's driving a lot of excitement for the full category, not just the alcohol-free beers, but alcohol-free drinks as a whole. Do you have to be careful, though, in a sense of what these um, alcohol-free beers look like, what these drinks look like in the sense that, you know, is it difficult if they look like they do have alcohol in them? In, in terms of the importation and general distribution, uh, not so much. I mean, one of the... One of the reasons that consumers uh, recognize these products because they do use the what we call the mother brand um, branding for the product, right? Um, I think what hasn't been allowed in the market to date, and I, I haven't seen that, is above the line advertising. So we haven't seen um, a lot of uh, out there marketing uh, of these products. However, I, I do see uh, a glimpse of hope that I, that is to come and, and there will be some changes towards that. Oh, Erica, what would you say are the big challenges in this market? Um, I think, you know, our, our home market, our stronghold is United Arab Emirates. So if I look at the UAE as a market, one of the biggest challenges we have is an absolute melting pot of different consumers, different nationalities, different religions. So to have a fit all marketing campaign it would be naive, you know, whenever we, we are the exclusive importers of uh, one of the AB InBev's alcohol-free beers, and we see it firsthand how we have to be creative and imaginative and have multiple marketing campaigns covering different consumer brand, consumer segments to explain to them what the products are. Some of the consumers know the brands, they understand what alcohol-free beer is, some do not. So we just have to be very creative and very agile in the way we are marketing these products. Mm. And what about the long-term prospects then? Do you think this is the kind of industry that will just build and build? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I first got into alcohol-free drinks uh, over four and a half years ago, and all I've seen is growth and growth and growth across all the categories, whether that's alcohol-free beer or alcohol-free spirits or, or alcohol-free wines. And I think the, the thing that's the most exciting uh, metric that we are tracking is not so much if you look at the big players like Diageo, Pernod Ricard, AB InBev, Heineken, not so much the percentage of their total revenue that the alcohol-free category is representing yet, but it's the percentage of the growth of this particular category compared to the rest of their business. So, you know, th this is the most exciting category to date in the drinks industry, and I only see it staying, and I only see it growing, and I do see the big players putting a lot of more resources behind it in the years to come. Yeah, and Erica, do you think that it's also down to the trends that are going on in many parts of the world in terms of people sort of being more into their health and fitness, and especially young people not drinking? Do you think those trends are tying into this? Absolutely. Uh, we have an obesity problem in the Middle East. Uh, there's no two ways about it. And if you are bringing in products that they have a lot less sugar, that have a lot less calories, um, that there's a natural shift towards that. And the new generation, they're a lot more mindful about what they're drinking. I think it's it wouldn't be correct to say that the Middle East follows the, the trends from the West like for like. There's always an adaptation to it. So, um, yeah, but, but it definitely has an impact for sure. Yeah, well, it seems like a very exciting time. And Erica, that's well explained. So thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure.